Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Neuberger. I'm the Director of Marketing. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we got just about one minute here before we get going, and uh, we're just going to give it a few more minutes before we get going, but definitely want to welcome everybody. Thank you for, for joining us today uh, to talk about a very, very exciting product, uh, NC890. So we'll get going here in just a, just a few minutes as we let a few more folks come in. Well, Jim, or, uh, looks like we're, we hit about the 10 o'clock hour here in Denver. Um, again, thank you for everyone joining us today. Uh, my name is uh, Josh Neuberger. I'm the uh, Director of Marketing here at UC News North America. I'm joined here today with uh, Jim Muggleton, who is the uh, product uh, manager for the Utsin Classic uh, uh, division here of Utsin News North America. And joining us a little later will be uh, Petrus Kruprides, who is our uh, head of R&D out in uh, Dover, Delaware. So he'll be joining us uh, as we talk a little bit later. And uh, really want to thank everybody for their time today. We're here to talk a lot about a very new, exciting product uh, to the Utsin Classic range. Uh, Utsin NC890, you may have seen some of the advertising out there. You know, we're not afraid to dive into the deep end. But um, really, again, we, we appreciate everybody's uh, time uh, today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim Muggleton. Jim, how are you doing today? I'm really good. Thank you, Josh. And welcome good. to all participants in, in today's uh, Productivity Series webinar. Uh, Josh, I'm going to just close down my camera and, uh, and, and start proceedings with the screen there, sir. Yep, and right before Jim gets going, just a little housekeeping note. Off to your right-hand side, you'll see a question bar, or if you're on your mobile phone, you'll see a question uh, or a place where you can put questions. If you have questions throughout the uh, webinar, just put them in there, and then at the end, we're going to come back on and we'll read through all the questions and get everything answered. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, and we'll get, we'll dive into the deep end. Awesome. Well, Josh, thank you. Good morning, all participants. Very excited to showcase. Uh, our latest innovation into the Utsin product uh, line for the classic range, shown on the bottom right-hand corner of your screens there, that is our latest um, product packaging for our new Utsin NC890 Hydro Patch, our 100% moisture resistant uh, patching compound, skim coat material. As you'll see, this forms part of our productivity series there. Josh just very kindly introduced me a moment ago. Um, my name is Jim Muggleton. I say I manage the classic range here for the Utsin product line. I have some 23 years experience in the commercial floor covering industry, um, having owned my own um, flooring distributor company prior to that in the, in the United Kingdom. I'm responsible for the Utsin classic range. Uh, my colleague Dave handles the, uh, the Utsin tile and stone uh, installation systems range. Uh, I have daily interaction with the colleague that uh, that was mentioned momentarily ago uh, in Mr. Petrus Krupies. And uh, I'll give a little eye up on Petrus's uh, details momentarily. Um, don't let the accent fool you, I am a resident of uh, Denver, Colorado also. My colleague Petrus Krupies, who will join us towards the end of today's presentation. Um, Petrus is our, our on-site chemist at our production facility in Dover, Delaware. Petrus has some as well as the colleagues in, uh, in, in um, Denver, Colorado, uh, with our production facility in Dover, Delaware. Petrus is the uh, responsible party, along with the, uh, the guys and girls in our, our research development facility there, um, out of Dover, Delaware, who have very kindly um, formulated the product that we're going to be discussing today. And we see this as a, uh, as a key change, um, industry change, to, uh, to how we're approaching all things Moisture 101. Petrus is also a resident of Dover, Delaware. So an introduction of today's product. Um, for those of you that are already familiar with our patching compounds, Utsin NC886 and NC888, um, you'll notice that the packaging to the bottom right-hand corner follows a very similar uh, CI to what we have 
in our existing patching compounds. By that, it's a £10 bag format, and you'll actually be receiving this product in um, cartons of uh, cardboard cartons that hold, hold four uh, bags of the, of the product there. This is a material that is particularly suited 101 for going beneath Utzine moisture mitigation products. For example, Utzine PE414, our polyurethane primer, um, slash MVR, slash surface strengthener, as well as our Utzine PE416 moisture mitigation product. This is a material that isn't just tied for, for being used in interior applications. It can actually be used in interior and exterior applications. The usual caveats for Correct concrete sub substrate preparation. Um, we want cleanliness, we want porosity there in order for the material to have a, a, a key to the substrate. Um, this product has no limitation, folks, on uh, relative humidity. So at the top of the table there, top of the chart for 100% RH, and for the top of the alkalinity chart, pH of 14, this product handles both of those requirements. You can use this product over properly prepared, um, primed, adhesive residues, including cutback adhesive residues. One thing in particular to mention, folks, is that when we say about using this product um, beneath moisture-resistant adhesives and floor coverings, to get this on the table, first of all, we are talking about a patching compound that is not a moisture vapor barrier. We're talking about a product here in Utsin NC890 Hydro Patch that is highly moisture-resistant, moisture-tolerant. So it allows for the free passage of moisture vapor through the face of the material without having um, a compromisation, if you like, uh, or a breakdown of the 890 material. Obviously, the dependence there on the floor covering adhesive manufacturers' allowances and tolerances. If we are placing over our 100% RH suitable patching compound in Hydro Patch, uh, a floor covering that has a maximum tolerance of 85% RH, then you obviously have to be driven by that tolerance, by that call out from the finished goods manufacturer, that that is the ceiling for the product. It cannot exceed 85% RH. Very important to, to mention these details in that, obviously with the inception of so many moisture um, resistant or moisture tolerant adhesives, so often, um, I think in our industry now, moreover, there's a focus that all products can handle up to 100% RH. Largely the driver in so many of these situations and circumstances is the actual finished goods manufacturer's floor covering. This is a heavy wear use product, can be used in domestic and commercial locations, including exposure to caster wheels. I do state, however, that this product must always receive a floor covering. So to focus on the key features and benefits, well, the the clue is in the name there for obviously 890 Hydro Patch, moisture tolerant, 100% RH, um, pH up to the top of the chart, as I mentioned, there are pH 14 for alkalinity. This is an advanced moisture resistant technology. You will find that this product underneath the trail is extremely smooth, um, a very buttery, almost creamy consistency, very similar to our 886 and 888 patching compounds. With that in mind, it's extremely easy to apply and you can look to install coverings in as little as 30 minutes, particularly when applying the material as a skin coat base. That fast dry formulation plays in obviously with, with our productivity as our product statement there, enabling you to install the floor coverings in a far reduced uh, time to that of other manufacturers' materials. The product has very fine uh, aggregate consistency. Very similar in its makeup to both products there, 886 and 888. What you'll find with the 890 product is that you can trowel apply as a skin coat, extreme good coverage that we'll, we'll discuss in a moment or two's time, but we can also ramp the product up to a half an inch depth. Now, one question that is often raised that I'm going to just cover for you folks in, in today's meeting is that so many people will often say, well, okay, can we use this material, Jim, um, for filling in uh, spalls or pop-outs in a, a, in a concrete floor that may exceed that half an inch depth? Absolutely, for small um, localized pockets, localized areas where we want to go deeper than that half inch allowance, we can certainly do that. Obviously, the caveat there is that it's going to take longer to dry for those uh, for those deeper pockets of, of cement. Like all Utsi materials that we're extremely proud of, we have a variable water range. Now, this is huge, particularly for the end installer. It allows that person, he or she, to adjust the consistency by that, adjust the water amount mixed in with the powder so that you get that comfortable um, muscle memory feel, that, that familiarity that those folks may well have uh, been used to for many, many years. It also allows in the winter months, 
we can actually look to reduce the water amount on the material and look to get a, 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 a slightly more achievable, faster um, dry finish to the product um, to enable floor covering installation in a reduced amount of time. That extreme surface finish, particularly ideal for oozing adhesives, be it uh, KE2000S or, or, or KE66, in application over uh, the NC890 Hydro Patch, just like 886 and 888, you will find that oozing adhesives will travel that, that um, tremendous coverage over the face of over the face of our product. No primer required. Obvious um, cost savings there in in labour, um, in handling the material on the floor. What you'll find in particular, folks, where we mentioned about no primer required, we've actually introduced alongside the launch of 890 Hydro Patch. We recently introduced our product Utim PE360 Plus, our porous uh, surface primer. That's a one component acrylic technology, and the application of that product in advance of, say, NC890 will look to minimize the potential of pinholing. Um, we always recommend, if in doubt, prime it out, and that's very true of, of this particular product. Yes, it can work without a primer, um, but for surface aesthetics, if you're really key on, on surface aesthetics, uh, want to minimize any potential for uh, pinholing thereafter, a uh, single coat of PE360 Plus in advance of NC890 Hydro Patch uh, application will look to uh, minimize the potential for that, uh, for that pinholing. PE360 Plus, I should mention, is also 100% uh, RH tolerant as well as pH tolerant up to the maximum alkalinity of 14. So the product face that you're um, going to achieve on the floor finish there has tremendous absorbency. Just like all other Utsin patching and leveling compounds, we have tremendous absorbency, but that's not to take away from that um, superior surface finish, that very, very smooth, uh, optically smooth finish that whilst it appears um, extremely dense, tight on the surface, we have tremendous absorbency. The product is compliant with California Department of Public Health. Um, we have the LEED V4 certification available for the material there as well, and obviously a low emitting um, product per the CA specification 01350. The PE360 product that I just mentioned momentarily is shown in the bottom right-hand corner of your screens there, folks. That product, similar to PE260 for our dilutable primer, um, PE360 is a non-dilutable product. We've done, all the, we've done all the hard work there in advance, guys. So it's ready to go. Um, basically, we literally shake the bottle, pour it into the, our, our roller tray or our paint bucket, um, and then we can dip and go with the, uh, with the roller sleeve there accordingly. The packaging very similar to PE260. We have a 2.6 gallon plastic pail and we have our fully recyclable uh, packaging format in our qubit system in a one gallon container, which actually is shown there in the, in the cardboard box packaging. For those of you that have recently reviewed the website for utsin.us, you will notice that we have had a regrouping, um, what we refer to as our performance pyramid classification. We now have three um, product categories for the Utsin patching compounds, leveling compounds, primers, um, not on the ancillary items, those are separate standalone products. In particular, when we talk about the patching compounds, where does NC890 fall in the, uh, in the category of either premium, premium plus or premium pro? Well, folks, because of the inherent benefits for that 100% moisture tolerance, 100% RH, pH alkalinity blocking of, of 14, this product holds the top tier of the pyramid. This is our premium pro product. Beneath that, we see the Utsin NC888 in the premium plus category. And then in premium, we have our Utsin NC886. To the bottom right-hand corner, you'll notice that with every one of these patching compounds, we have not only fast drying technology, I mentioned about that superior smooth surface, the water range, that adjustable consistency, which is huge. Um, huge in, in being able to adjust that um, water amount into the material there and gather that correct consistency on the floor. And when you work within the parameters that we've set there for base of water range, top of water range, you folks are covered, particularly when it comes down to warranty, warranty inclusion there as well. Mix within the water range and there can be no issues. We mentioned about the no primer required. Um, obvious caveat there, subfloors have got to be assessed 
and attained in advance to make sure that uh, whether or not priming is uh, is required or not. We mentioned about the circumstance of this product going over the top of cutback adhesive residue. Can do, provided there's a primer in between the two. The versatility, absolutely 101 um, for routine products, but any routine products that we look to introduce, be it into the classic range or the tile and stone installation systems range, versatility is the key driver. What we don't want to do is, is put out a particular product that has one set um, attribute to the market. We're looking for multifaceted materials so that you guys get the majority maximum benefits out of each and every one of our products. And being able to combine those in a system and have that warranty inclusion there as well is obviously huge, not only to yourselves, not only to our distribution partners, but also to their customers. The versatility, absolutely. We mentioned there about the moisture tolerance, um, up to 100% RH. You won't find that cover uh, with the 888 and the 886. 890 holds that mantle now, hence I mentioned being at the top of the performance pyramid. So on technical data, well, I mentioned the packaging format at the beginning of the presentation, a 10 pound bag, very similar to, uh, to what you're used to there, folks, in the 886 and 888. Uh, you will find on the packaging, um, not only on the packaging, but also on the product data sheet literature for this material, that we've quoted not only what it will take for the um, full water amount when blending a full 10 pound bag, but we are realistic um, to know that in the field, we aren't necessarily going to be mixing full bags at a time. We could often be mixing, say, a half bag or a quarter bag mix. So we've actually included the half bag mix ratio between 0.87 to 0.92 quarts. We also mark liters there as well because we have the liter water measure buckets available for you folks. And of course, we cover for liters for our Canadian colleagues as well. So being able to judge a half bag mix, it's very easy math to then figure out what you need to mix a, a quarter bag of powder. Um, to harmonize the product and get the correct consistency on the floor. Tremendous coverage to this product. Uh, we're extremely proud of, uh, of the adaptability and the, and the square foot coverage on the 890 product. Up to 350 square feet that we have um, ascertained for ourselves previously. Obviously, coverage is all, always going to be dependent on substrate, porosity, um, the mechanical face of the floor itself. Those things are also going to affect the, the dry time as well as the coverage. This product I mentioned before, folks, must always receive a floor covering. This is not a, a finished um, wear surface application product. You must always install a, floor fin a finished floor covering over the top of the product itself. Similar to our leveling compounds, you'll find that the minimum, minimum working temperature is at 50 Fahrenheit at floor level, 10 degrees Celsius. And we have a product here that with skim coat applications, we can then look to look and look to store install over the top of in as little as 30 minutes. Now coming back to that skim coat coverage there of up to 350 square feet, for many of you, you'll see that we actually have um, out of all of the patching compounds, be it 886, 888, or 890, we have the lowest water range with this particular product. My colleague Petrus, I'm sure will elaborate on this towards the end of the presentation, but we have a tremendous water retention with this particular product. Um, a hydrophobic um, reaction, if you like, where the water remains within the face of the material, allowing it to travel over a, over a subsequent um, very vast um, square footage on the floor. Ready for majority floor coverings as, as little as 30 minutes um, to two hours um, over absorbent substrates. As a skim coat finish, um, myself, my colleagues, my colleagues in Dover and Denver, um, customers out there in the field as, as test subjects, um, have noticed that that 30 minutes is more than achievable um, for skim coat coverage um, prior to installing floor coverings. The compressive strength on the material, obviously a huge go-to with patching compounds. You'll see that we have um, uh, an exceedance of uh, 3,000 pounds per square inch PSI, compressive strength, and we have two values there. We have in air at 28 days. And then beneath that, you'll see that we mention about PSI in underwater storage at 28 days. When we're focused on a product such as Hydra Patch that is aimed majority to go beneath um, moisture tolerant floor coverings or beneath UTSI mitigation products, be it 414 polyurethane or 460 100% solids epoxy, you want to make sure that that product isn't going to degrade or break down. 
Hence why we tested the product in underwater storage at 28 days. And we noticed that exceedance, I say, of, of the same value there of 3,000 pounds per square inch. Packaging format, we ran through that previously, folks. Um, 10 pound bags. The packaging that you see in the base of the screen there um, are new cardboard um, cartons, uh, recyclable cartons there. Um, hold four bags of patching compound. The foil bags themselves uh, placed individually in vehicles. We obviously want to be uh, making sure and in ensuring that those products aren't going to be compromised and the packaging is going to be compromised. So we've put this very easy carry carton, um, handle either side there for easy lift, um, and you'll be able to pick those up from the distributor partners. Uh, and I believe that we are now running into that new packaging format that we see on the base of the screen the new um, white and two-tone blue, um, black text there as well. Previously, for those of you that were used to 886 and 888, you'll have been familiar, um, extremely familiar with our, our brown um, packaging cartons previously. Now we've um, stepped it up and it aids to visibility, certainly on the shelf and at the distributor um, point of sale there as well. Four cartons per bag, exactly the same as we'd expect there folks for um, a pallet of 886 or 888 we have 160 bags it equates to 40 cardboard cartons per pallet literature and marketing that's available for the material right now you will see via um, the uteam.us website that we have not only the product data sheet but also the safety data sheet available for this particular material um, we also cover for the uh, marketing pieces that uh, Josh is our director of marketing and uh, the colleagues in, in the marketing department have done a wonderful job in creating our campaign title of We're Not Afraid of the Deep End. Um, in particular, um, mentioning obviously, as I just called out there, primary use for the material beneath a moisture um, tolerant floor covering or Ootsie mitigation materials 101, that's where you're going to be installing this particular material. No limitations on moisture to meet in with um, American Society test methods uh, for F710 and F3010. I mentioned about the exceptional coverage and workability on the product there as well. That really is um, not only a, a key feature of this particular product, but we've all seen patching and indeed leveling compounds to make them user friendly so that it saves you guys um, time and, and, and money and gives you the extra advantage there on the job site. Alkali resistant up to pH 14, alkalinity and, uh, and high moisture obviously going hand in hand there as well. So we would be remiss if we didn't have a product here that was uh, tolerant for not only 100% RH, but also for uh, maximum alkalinity there as well. At this point, folks, I would like to, uh, I would like to hand proceedings to my colleague um, Petrus Krupies, who is going to talk a little bit more in elaboration of the um, ASTM standards um, uh, for F710 and F3010 as to, um, as to where we will look to, uh, to position this particular product moving forward. So Petrus, if I may, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn over to you at this particular point, sir. Um, thank you, Jim. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right, good. Um, so uh, in addition to addressing ASTM F710 and F3010 and its, uh, their relevance, I first I'd like to start with uh, addressing the term moisture resistance and how it applies to a cementitious patch. Uh, this term is not yet defined by our industry. Um, and as of today, it is open for interpretation. So I would just like to share the use and perspective of what it means for us and how it played a role in the design of this product. There are uh, other patching products, uh, as you know, on the market that claim to be moisture resistant. However, very few details are available of what makes them moisture resistance, uh, resistant. For example, I've seen a marketing point claiming that just uh, not falling apart in water um, is enough to be moisture resistant for this product. Well, um, we sat down and we uh, thought a little bit deeper and our project became to develop a moisture resistant compound that uh, would ensure that moisture will not have any detrimental effect on the patch over the long term. That means that any property we are able to test this as it relates to a patch must withstand prolonged moisture exposure. And what are those properties that we test? Uh, 
for example, compressive strength, does it retain it? Does it gain it in water, in high moisture, and in air? How about bond strength? Does it retain bond strength? Um, also, does it soften up at the surface after prolonged moisture exposure? And also, how do we test it? We said we, uh, we don't want to play around with simulating varying levels of humidity. Let's simply throw our, all of our specimens in water and design the tests so that there is a maximum exposure to moisture. And that is most of the time the, the patch itself and the whole assembly of the test was submerged in water for a long periods of time. Um, underwater, so just to, to give you some results, underwater the patch had even higher values for compressive strength and bond strength to concrete than in air. Um, we are completed our testing, the bond strength, the compressive strength, and also the surface of the patch, even if directly exposed to water, did not deteriorate at all. In most of the cases, it did even better in underwater than in air. So that leads us to believe that in higher relative humidity, you would see probably better results than in, in even lower ones. However, uh, coming back to ASTMF, 710, which is a standard practice for preparing concrete floors to receive resilient floor covering. And also F3010, which is a standard practice once again for a two component resin based membrane forming moisture mitigation system. So co covering uh, with epoxy essentially. Those standard practices actually call for uh, that the substrate uh, has a minimum of 3,000 PSI at 28 days after application. So there is a hard target of 3,000 PSI minimum. Um, and we tested our NC890. It does reach and easily exceed 3,000 PSI when tested per ASTM standards um, of compressive strength. We also tested the bond strength. It was also very easily reached and exceeded uh, and the bond strength is just mentioned for the F3010 standard where the substrate had to, to bond to concrete for more than 200 PSI. So that's also easily achieved. Um, to summarize the technical section, oh, I, I think Jim, you mentioned that you wanted me to talk about uh, workability a little bit. Yes, so, uh, yes, please. Yeah, um, of course, as with all of our using products, we want to design them to be friendly to the installer so that it, the products are very forgiving and very easy to apply. And uh, as it relates to patch, one of the properties that makes a patch easy to apply is something we call water retention. And, uh, and that's the situation when a substrate is somewhat absorbent which is able to soak up water from the material that's going over it. And that's often the case with the, with the patches. They, you don't need a special primer that blocks that uh, absorption. Typically the concrete is somewhat absorbent. And what can happen is that if the water does, does not stay in the patch for long enough, as you trowel and spread it at your hundredth square foot of bag or two hundredth skimming the, the concrete, uh, the, the paste will by then have lost its water and its moisture and it will become clay-like, it will become dry and will begin rolling under the trowel and you will have a, a clear um, visual that uh, the patch is not sticking anymore to concrete. So that property we also worked on and just like our NC888, which could be spread endlessly on an absorbent substrate, um, this patch will also retain its moisture and will not burn out. That's another phrase we use. It. If the patch dries out while spreading, it burns out. Um, this just contributes to the ability to spread the patch really far without having to build a, a thick layer because of there's no more moisture left in it. Um, yeah, and it's also very easy to apply. There will be much less frustrations on the job site. Um, yeah, that, 
uh, other than that, it's just a smooth finish, a uniform smooth finish with a great bond. To summarize this technical section, NC890 Hydro Patch will safely exceed 3000 PSI, which is called by standard practices as per ASTM. Whether cured in air or submerged in water, it will not lose strength over long term in both conditions. It will retain integrity and bond strength exceeding 200 PSI by a large margin, whether to bond it to, to substrate or be the cohesive strength or surface strength underwater. Um, and all this is how we stand out from the competition in this product segment. We were able to achieve a combination of great workability and also reliable performance with NC890 Hydro Patch. In addition to that, all the performance values we declare on the data sheets are independently verified. I've seen numerous examples where great values are declared about other products uh, in our industry, but um, we could not reproduce them in, in our labs. So we just want to make sure that our information is credible. So not only we self-declare the values, but we also uh, ask a credible third-party laboratory to, to verify what we are claiming. And those reports are available for download on our website. So to sum it up, so, uh, when you use this product, you can be sure it has the strength and a good bond and good rate workability to, to perform well in your project. Petrus, thank you. Uh, I think that, um, that, that, that covers it nicely. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Josh, I think we're at a point now, sir, where we could look to, uh, Petrus and I will we'll turn on the webcams here and uh, we'll look to fill some questions. Yeah, you bet, you bet. Um, so we got, a, we got a few coming in here. I guess uh, one question, kind of, can you review the moisture resistant values again? Uh, you know, as far as the alkalinity, this looks like a little review here. So, for what we just mentioned on the presentation there, folks, um, maximum tolerance up to 100% relative humidity, as well as um, top of the table when it comes down to uh, to values there for um, pH, alkalinity up to the top of the table chart of pH 14. Um, now that was listed in the in the presentation there, Josh, but that is indeed the uh, that is indeed the case with with the 890 Hydro Patch product. Got it. And as far as this product goes. Um, you know, we still want to be able to use a moisture barrier uh, with this with this product underneath. Is that, that's correct, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Yep. And you mentioned the 360 product uh, in conjunction with the with the 890. What what are some benefits there of of really kind of tying this system in together? Absolutely, Josh. Well, in particular, we mentioned there about the surface face of the material. Um, here we have a product that can be used um, for interior and exterior purposes. When it comes to interior, we could look to combine the PE360 Plus beneath the 890 Hydro Patch to get that uh, superior uh, surface finish so that we've not got uh, the potential there for pinholing, particularly when it comes down to highly absorbent finishes. Um, if we were coating, for example, um, in a circumstance that wasn't down to um, high moisture tolerance, um, we can indeed use the 890 Hydro Patch in similar circumstances that we would for um, 886 or 888. So it can be used as a true all-rounder, um, not just for moisture mitigation purposes, but also for um, uh, including the PE360 primer, as I say, to, uh, to give that um, superior uh, surface finish without the potential for, or certainly minimizing the potential for pinholing in the face of the product itself. Yeah, uh, it's a good deal. Uh, what is the shelf life again on the 890? Nine months, sir. So it follows exactly the same as the uh, the 886 and the 888. And uh, just to elaborate on that, Josh, all of our um, cementitious patching compounds, leveling compounds, are manufactured out of the facility where um, Petrus resides in Dover, Delaware, as yeah. our main manufacturing plant here on the in the east coast of the United States. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And noticing, uh, uh, it looks like we got another question here on the data sheet. We actually do give up different uh, different mixing ratios for mixing a half a bag and and so forth. Uh, Want to watch it? Walk us through that just one more time, real quick. Absolutely. In particular, Josh, for those folks out there that are familiar with the eight eight six and eight eight eight, 
Um, when it comes down to mixing part measures of either of those two products, you can actually look to put in a mix of uh, two parts powder to one part water, and that will generally give you the ideal consistency, the creamy consistency, um, prior to applying either the 886 or the 888. With this particular product in the 10 pound format, um, we have a very low um, water range, lower than, than, than both the products there for the 886 and 888. Therefore, we, we are, we're not able to provide that um, part mix quantity for, um, for 890. We can't go with that value of uh, two parts powder to one part water. So what we look to do in essence to make things clearer for the, for the consumer, particularly for the end installer, is to say, okay, the 10 pound bag, measures this amount if you look to put in a, a, a half pound a five pound mix um by that just 50 percent of the the volume there we give the water ratio there accordingly so it allows the install of that little bit more um user friendly attribute um in mixing up part measures of, of product um we give the value there for a I say a, a half a half bag mix a five pound mix so accordingly a two and a half pound a quarter bag mix can be ascertained very easily there as well yeah, no, no, no doubt, no doubt. Um, another question here: Do uh, do we recommend using the the primer, you know, a primer, when installing NC eight ninety over ceramic tile? So, in the purpose of, um, we can call it out for um, non mitigation, mitigation certainly. Uh, what we'd be looking to to put down um, for the eight ninety, I would suggest a. a, a a suitable key um, porosity for the for the material itself. So if we were going to apply over the top of say a, a porcelain um, tile or a ceramic tile, the benefit there would be to um, to potentially open up the face of the material, or in a non-absorbent um, situation circumstance like that, that wasn't prone to um, high moisture in excess of 85% RH, we could actually use our PE280 primer, uh, one component um, acrylic. Uh, material roller applied with the Utsin 3 8 nap nylon roller sleeve. Um, that's a very fast drying, uh, non-porous surface primer that cures in as little as, little as 40 to 45 minutes um, prior to the application of, say, the 890. We couldn't use the uh, 280 primer, however, in that particular circumstance in advance of eight, greater than 85% RH. So uh, for going over the top of a ceramic tile, um, provided that it is well bonded and keyed to the substrate beneath, we could look to coat over the top with the 890, but you are going to have to create uh, a surface absorbency. So suggestion there to actually open up the face of the tiles prior to application of, of the 890 to give it some porosity, certainly. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, really, and just if you if you don't mind just restating, Jim, and I know you mentioned it once in the in the uh, in the presentation earlier really really important as you mentioned to uh really follow any floor covering manufacturers requirements for moisture tolerances etc um and and really got to make sure you mitigate if need be right yeah absolutely sir with 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 this josh i think we've got uh, a little bit of a miscommunicate in the in the industry at present where so many folks are seeing these um moisture tolerant adhesives um, that go to x um, inflated inflated values and take that as a green light then to go ahead and put uh, various other products beneath that uh, beneath that high moisture tolerant adhesive that really is a misgiving um, and, and really needs to be ascertained up front first and foremost by review of the finished goods um, floor covering manufacturers website visiting the particular product page that relates to that floor covering um, if needs be, pick up the phone to these guys. They get paid for they get paid to do that for a living um, in answering your technical calls and ascertaining first of all, okay, what is the key driver in play here? What is the maximum uh, relative humidity tolerance that this particular floor covering can 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 go to? Um, that then drives uh, the system of products placed beneath it. We have here um, with 890 Hydro Patch in conjunction with PE360 Plus, uh, say for example over a a slab that's blowing some 98, 99 um, percent RH. We have uh, two products that can be utilized as system components, uh, whereby you can then apply um, high moisture tolerant um, adhesive over the top of the product, or indeed if you're using a loose lay um, click together product, say as a, a, a click together PVC plank, you could install that without the use of adhesive. So with or without adhesive, it's really making sure that every component within that sandwich 
um, is able to tolerate up to the maximum allowance for the finish floor covering. If the finish floor covering in majority is still state 85% RH, um, if the finish floor covering states 85, then that's to really be your driver and your indication that, okay, uh, a, a moisture tolerant patching compound on a floor that's blowing some 98, 99% RH must receive um, topical mitigation or some sort of a loose lay uh, mitigating barrier um, beneath that covering up to 100% RH in order to tolerate for the, for the finished floor covering manufacturer's material placed on the top. So a lot of things in play, um, particularly when it comes to the story of moisture vapor, moisture tolerance, moisture resistance, um, call it what you will, deem it what you will, um, that finished floor covering manufacturer's figure drives the system um, in, in, in majority of cases. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, looks like we had another question here. On a saw cut exhibiting high alkalinity, would we recommend using KR518 and then 890, or could we use the 890 just by itself? Um, we could use the 890 just by itself, folks. In particular, when it comes down to a saw cut, um, one thing that I would uh, recommend in particular, obviously, cleanliness is key, uh, making sure that we've got a, a good um, mechanical sidewall to the to the joints themselves, that it's been, been cleaned and vacuumed um, accordingly. Um, one thing in particular, and it's something that my colleague um, made me made me aware of, is the use of, say, a compressed air um, on the job site to make sure that any sitting debris is removed um, out of those out of those saw joints, uh, saw cuts prior to the application of, of NC890 Hydro Patch. But certainly, Josh, you could use that material or this material in that particular circumstance, yes. Um, one thing when you bring um, in such a circumstance of a saw cut filling in with 890 Hydro Patch, for example, we want to make sure that the material sits flush um, to either side wall joint so that it's a nice um, even covering prior to putting down, say, a, a mitigation material such as um, a real belt and suspenders, which is PE460, because there is no limit on, uh, on, on moisture tolerance or alkalinity when using that product. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Good. Um, another question, can we add epoxy over this, uh, over 890, you know, to use as a finished wear surface? So the 890 itself wouldn't necessarily be the finished uh, floor surface, but could it be stained and then coat it with a, with a high build epoxy? Yeah, we cannot do that. We cannot do that, Josh. Um, as a as a finish floor covering over the top of the product, um, for example, let's list the covering, sheet PVC, um, uh, vinyl finish over the top, uh, more than acceptable. But this product is not a, a finish um, wear surface. Uh, I say it must always receive a, a suitable sealant or, or coating over the top face of the product itself. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Well, Jim, it uh, looks like we've kind of wrapped up all the questions. Um, any last comments here uh, by yourself or Petrus? Do you know in, in particular, and I asked that question of, of, of Petrus, I'm, I'm good, thank you, sir, on that. Petrus, have you got any additional information to answer? No, I guess we're good if there are no more questions. Okay, the only other thing I was just gonna mention here in the background, Josh, is uh, that we have, um, of our series of uh, productivity as our product. Our next pre product presentation, folks, is going to be um, given by my colleague Joe List, um, who's a representative for Wolf Tools. That will be on November the 12th um, in mountain time for my time in 10 o'clock in the morning. So it's so very much the same as, as we've had here this morning. Um, you can go to our website at uh, utzine.us and actually look to register for that presentation that will be given by Joe on November 12th. Other than that, folks, and, and mention this to you as well, Josh, um, I just want to say a, a tremendous thank you on behalf of uh, myself and, and, and my colleagues um, for, for your continued uh, use of, of Ootseen products, um, your continued business support, um, in particular um, with the current circumstances that we find ourselves in. We are tremendously um, tremendously appreciative of everything that you folks do for us. So thank you very much indeed. If you want any additional um, information, you can either reach out to me directly or you can contact through to uh, your local uh, Ootsie represent uh, representative and you'll see we've got the mugshots of, uh, of our group as it, as it stands at the moment there. In fact, it's been added to since that, since that picture was taken there as well. 
But otherwise, Josh, no, thank you very much. And thank you for the participants' time. I hand it back to you, Josh. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate everybody joining us today for the productivity series. As Jim mentioned, make sure to register for our upcoming uh, uh, next uh, one with the Wolf Tools. And uh, if uh, anybody has any questions, please reach out to Jim or the Utsin representatives. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. And a copy of this recording will be placed on our website for anybody that may have missed it in your in your companies. Uh, for my for Jim, for myself, again, thank you, and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Josh. Thank you.